Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we'll learn to fit nonlinear curves using the technique of adding polynomial terms to a regression model. So a very good example of where you might want to do this in order to fit a nonlinear curve uh, is this figure right here. So on the left-hand side, we can see uh, the monthly gas bill for a single-family home in Minnesota plotted against the average monthly temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So every dot here represents a single month the gas bill in dollars for that month and the average temperature. Uh, and what you can see is a very clear negative trend that, uh, hey, it's pretty cold in Minnesota, uh, but as it gets warmer in the spring and summer months, uh, the gas bill goes down because you're using a lot less gas to heat the house. Uh, however, uh, the straight line fit uh, that we see here fit using ordinary least squares. Uh, and, and if you want to know that equation, it's actually right down here, $226 minus three times temperature plus the residual, uh, you can see that that doesn't fit the data especially well. And we can diagnose that very easily in this residual plot over here. Uh, and so we see a clear pattern in the residuals. If you look kind of below 20 degrees, you notice that most of the residuals are positive. Uh, you look in this region right here, say between about, you know, minus 35 and about, I'm sorry, 35 and about 60, uh, most of the residuals are negative right here. Uh, whereas here, above, say, 65 degrees or so, virtually all of the residuals are positive. So we've clearly failed to take the x-ness out of y, take the systematic trend in the gas bill uh, uh, and adjust it effectively for average monthly temperature. Uh, and that's because clearly there's a nonlinear function going uh, on here. As the temperature rises, uh, yeah, the gas bill goes down, but it goes down at a, at a decelerating rate as the temperature goes up. Okay, so... Uh, a, a much better way to handle this is to fit a polynomial regression. Obviously, a straight line is a special case of a polynomial. We could call that a, a first-degree polynomial. Uh, but if we start adding powers, and in this case we've added a second power, a quadratic term in temperature, we get a quadratic regression model. Okay, And so if we fit that equation by least squares, which is very, very straightforward to do, here's the equation we get, here's the constant term, here's the linear term, Here's the quadratic term, and of course we always have a residual. Uh, and if you want to see what that looks like as a fitted regression model, here it is on the left-hand side of this figure right here. And you can see the quadratic fit uh, looks pretty solid. It's, uh, it, it's capturing the fact that as uh, temperature goes up, uh, the gas bill is going down but at a, a decelerating rate, and it kind of levels off here towards the right-hand side of this plot. Now, a very natural way to think about this, uh, the, the first time you see it, is to say, all right, well, uh, if uh, I added a second power of the x variable here of temperature, and that fit the model, uh, rather fit the y variable better than the straight line fit, uh, why not add a third power, or a fourth power, or heck, you know, why not 15 powers of x, okay? And, and you could do that. That would give us a k degree polynomial right here. This k uh, would be the maximum power, so you could, uh, in the previous one we chose that to be 2, uh, but there's no logical upper bound uh, to the, uh, the number of powers that you add. So uh, here's what you get if you fit a 15th degree polynomial. So there's the constant term and then 15 powers of x uh, in a regression equation. Now this fits the data a lot better, uh, this uh, right-hand side plot right here, uh, in the sense that it has a lower sum of squared errors, a lower sum of squared residuals than the thing on the left-hand side. Uh, but this is a pretty clear example of something that we'll call overfitting uh, or chasing noise uh, in the data. Uh, and uh, overfitting occurs when a regression model starts to, instead of modeling the systematic trend between the y and the x variables, it just starts to memorize the random noise in the data. Uh, and and uh, this is a really, really clear example of overfitting. How would you diagnose it? Uh, well, we'll learn some more technical ways to diagnose overfitting later in the semester, but here it's pretty much just intuition. Uh, you know, there's absolutely no reason why you would fit a 15th degree polynomial uh, to this and expect, for example, that the relationship between gas bill and temperature would go down and then up and then down and then level off and then down again and level and up a little bit. It just, all those jumps and wiggles and, and ups and downs don't really make any substantive sense for this problem. Uh, and, and so just that, that violation of our clear intuition that it should be kind of decreasing uh, and not bumping up every now and again is a pretty clear indication of overfitting right here, okay? Uh, and in regression modeling, you know, we're always aiming to fit models uh, that, uh, that fit, but that don't overfit over here. And this is a pretty clear example. You know, if you're going to compare, if you, if you think of a fit to the data as a spectrum, the linear model that we saw before is a clear example 
of underfitting the data. We're not actually describing the systematic trend. We're missing some clear variation uh, due to the x variable right here. Whereas the 15th degree polynomial is a clear example of overfitting, just chasing noise. And the quadratic fit is sort of that Goldilocks, just right uh, kind of uh, in between. Uh, and so this is, this is our goal in regression modeling, to get something that's fit, not neither underfit nor overfit. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about extrapolation uh, briefly in the context of polynomial regression models. Uh, and and the, 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 um, the basic idea of extrapolation, uh, you know, it, it's something that, that you can do not just in a polynomial regression model, though, but really with any kind of statistical model or any model of reality. Essentially, extrapolation means using a model to make predictions beyond the range of past experience. Okay, so what we've done right here, let's remember that we can use a regression model to do plug-in prediction. Just take a, a new value of the x variable, plug it into the equation, and ask what is the predicted value of the y variable. And here's what we've done for the, uh, the quadratic fit. Okay, uh, and you can see this has some very undesirable features when we use it to extrapolate, which is to say predict beyond the range of our experience. We've never seen any months uh, in this data set where the average monthly temperature is above 80 degrees, uh, and so that's extrapolation. And you can see it has this undesirable feature of, of kind of turning back up again, uh, which doesn't really make any sense. And, and, you know, the quadratic fit is not constrained by the data uh, beyond the range of the data, and so it eventually will turn back around again because it's a parabola. Uh, and so that, that's a... a an undesirable feature of polynomial regression models is that they will behave in ways that aren't very sensible when you use them to extrapolate. Okay? Uh, however, this behavior, you know, it's not so bad for the quadratic model, and this might not actually be a super bad prediction even going out to 90 degrees. Uh, the, the be this behavior is, is magnified to a huge extent when you talk about higher order polynomial regression models. So this is the example of the 15th degree polynomial that we saw fit before. Here, for the second order, you know, it, it looks kind of reasonable, and only out here starts to look silly. Like, why would, would get the gas bill go up again? It's not used for air conditioning. Here, literally as soon as we get beyond the available range of the data, you know, about 70, 90 degrees right here, this prediction falls off a cliff. And that's because that 15th degree polynomial just decays extremely rapidly uh, once it stops being constrained by the, uh, by the data, by the available range of past experience. Uh, and so... Uh, you know, really the, the moral of the story here uh, is that you shouldn't use polynomial regression terms to extrapolate uh, really at all unless you really, really know what you're doing. And you almost certainly should never be fitting polynomial regression models that are this large, 15th degree. Uh, you know, in a more advanced regression class, you will learn, you know, other tools for handling very, very highly nonlinear curves. Typically, when we fit polynomial models, we're talking modest degree polynomials, quadratics, maybe third or fourth order polynomials in, in uh, kind of very complicated circumstances. Virtually never this, and certainly never use this kind of model to make an extrapolation. 